I'm Rowena from McMorgan Next Practice Marketing. Now, thinking about structure often ends up with people grabbing org charts, looking at individuals and people and moving them into different boxes and maybe just smashing them together. Well, that's not going to work when you're really changing from a legacy system to a customer experience approach. And you also want to make sure that you've thought through the different options. So I'm going to introduce you today a really important first step before you grab the org charts and think of people, which will help you make sure you get the strategic structural design right. So what we've got here, and I've made these up, but these, you know, probably true of a lot of organisations, are four different design principles. So what is it that we want this new structure to achieve? So I've got here responsiveness to customers because I'm looking for customer experience, how to eliminate task duplication and silos, a common challenge in organisations, how to improve service consistency through suppliers, again going to my customer experience, and then how do we cross leverage and teach across divisions through employees. So again, how do we bring those new skill sets in and help everyone understand what that means until ultimately it's a way of working. So I want my structure to deliver these things because these are what I've defined through my outputs, my tasks and my capabilities. So how do I then assess what is the best way forward? How do I get to that place where I can actually move it into an org chart, org design? Well, there's no one way to skin a cat. And if you're looking at principles, then the benefit is you can look at alternative ways to get there. So I've just put up here three different ways that we could look at that. So here's option A, it would look like this. Here's option B, it would look like this. And then here's option C, it would look like this. It's really important that you make them significantly different so you're not really tweaking and debating nuance. You're really testing the strategic robustness of these different options. Now, what you can do is basically go through and say, does it meet this? Yes, no, maybe. So let's just say this first approach, which is A, it does this and this, but we get two crosses. Not sure I want to put my organization through the chaos of this. Option B gets two ticks across and a tick. Definitely better than option A. And option C gets four ticks. Well, now I can actually see why this third option is the best way to deliver what I've said is important. And I can then spend my time really understanding how to bring that to life, thinking also about the outputs, the tasks, and the capabilities. So whenever you're thinking about structure and strategic design, don't just grab the org chart and start moving people in boxes. Really spend time with your board level C-suite partners, with HR, crystallizing what are your principles for success and how do you evaluate different options against that? So that when you do decide how to set your teams up for success, it's very clear why, and then it's very clear how. Hi, it's me again. If you enjoyed this video series, then maybe you wanna think about coming to one of our training programs, because not only do we go into a lot more detail around the frameworks that you've seen, we actually provide live examples, real case studies, and role plays, so that you actually understand exactly how to do this back in your job. So don't delay, come and join us. We would love to see you there.